Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. It is putting out power, though. Input tune is not too bad. Those are your off harmonics. Alright, let's see what we got going on for voltages in here. That's a problem. Okay, let me play with this for a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, Mr. Ron, here's your hopper box. I couldn't just put this one over there with the other ones. I went ahead and went through it. Um, turn the voltages up on a power supply um, from whatever it was. It was like 15 volts and went to 16.5, but underneath load it drops to 14.5 instead of 13.5. Um, had to take a turn out of the driver. It had too many turns in it. I added metal clad capacitors to your output transformers to keep them from breaking down. I basically changed out all these parts. Um, changed it so your output tuning tube was variable. So we can move it back and forth. Got that dialed in where it needs to be. Um, changed out this resistor so it's not a 5 water. Took out the input pads. Um, technically this power supply is a little bit too small to run this amp. And we're going to turn on the spectrum analyzer. I'm going to explain to you how to read this here in a second. Boot. Come on, boot. Okay, so the span of this thing is Start is 2.67 megahertz. Center is 27.50, otherwise just above the 11 meter band. And stop is 52 megahertz, right here, 52 megahertz center and span. Okay, this shows us all of the signal all the way across the band from almost all the way down at zero megahertz, the CB frequency, and then well outside of resonance. Okay, turn the amp to standby. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, turn this to operate. Hello. One, 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 one. Hello. One, 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 one. Okay, so with the same 20 watts worth of drive that we had yesterday. Hello. Now, turn this to operate. Hello. We found 400 and some watts in your amp. Got you up to 900. So basically, all fixed. Now I'm going to repair the power wires that power the fan, put the lid on it. I got to lock down this tuning variable, make sure it's nice and low, and it's in the done pile. On to the next bot amp, bro. Oh, and I will stick a BBI sticker on this, by the way. <laughs> it's so stupid. I'm not gonna work on this. Oh man! I literally ran to the end of my rope yesterday. So in the, since the other two segments I've got, several days have gone by, actually, you guys. And it started out being a repair situation for a guy, and. It has since turned into a sales situation. Our 
pro our point of view has gone from just make it work and work somewhat right to this guy really wants to own this box, the person that it's going to. And he's had me send him pictures, and he's had me he's called me three, four times about it. And I'm like, man, calm down. There's gonna be a full YouTube video about it. Now the main thing that this guy wants is sideband at it. So we're gonna do that here in a minute. But as I expressed in a previous segment, I'm a little bit concerned about the size of the power supply. And I know that they had some issues going on with these switchers. So for this thing to leave here, I've got to be a thousand, hundred percent, million percent confident in what's going on inside this box. So I got all the components to build the bias, but I've got to make sure <clears throat> that everything is just titties on this because this is going to go away from here and it's going to go a long ways away from here and I don't want it to ever come back here and I want this guy to get a ton of use out of it. Now what you have to think is each transistor pulls roughly 20-25 amps worth of current. Well, 20, 50, 75, 100. We have 100 amps for the power supply, but we still have a whole nother transistor over here. So, we do got a good filtering bank system in this that was added. And um, the questionable link is these two units. When I go and add bias to this, it makes the amplifier pull even more current. Where we're pulling the less, least amount of current is the, well, in class C mode, where it's at now, 100% of ground with these little chokes. So we're going to bias to it. We're going to sit here and we're going to measure some things. And I want to see what happens. And unless this thing is absolutely tits, it's off the table for being sold. But then again, I do have some technology that we can drop in here directly in this spot that'll do the job beautifully. It's just we're going to require a small rewire and a little bit of cabinet modification. But we're going to see if we can avoid that and let's build some confidence in these supplies. That note, I shall return. So I didn't notice this before, but when I was taking the power supplies out, I couldn't help but notice there was these four holes here underneath the switchers. And I thought to myself, self, boy, that sure looks like the footprint for a transformer. You know what that fits? That guy. That is straight out of a APC battery backup um, 100 amp transformer. This is a uh, badass. These uh, iron transformers, these are cool. Um, back in the day, you'd get these, a base unit like this, and they'd come with an unregulated supply that was based off of either a transformer of that style or you would get two of these smaller units. They're about 40 amps a piece. It would be in the same place. Slightly smaller footprint. And that's the way these things were made for decades. And it wasn't until we got the regulated supplies, the switchers, that we got away from making these things so heavy. I mean, personally, I don't think these switchers are going to cut the mustard once we add the bias. And we might have to go back to this heavy bastard. If that's the case, it's not that I don't have the parts. And instead of building one of these shitty 50 amp rectifiers that are submerged in gray plastic and metal, we found these 200 amp bridges work scooching better. And it's not going to be a lot of work to convert the two over. But I want to play with the switcher the way it sits. I'm going to build some confidence in it before I can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to leaving them in there. 
because leaving them in there makes it a lot easier on the very thin aluminum um, that the cabinet's made of from the aspect of shipping. Okay, makes it easier on the uh, person that receives it as far as the cost of shipping, and it way lowers our ability or our possibility of having damage in shipping. So. I haven't given up total hope yet, but I do have the parts. I went ahead and I pulled them. So let's get on with getting the power supplies pulled out and we're going to play with the voltages and I want to test some stuff and uh, build some more confidence in these switchers. I've spent a large amount of time looking at this amp now. I'm going on like hour number three of me playing with it on sideband and playing with different voltage adjustments. I'm going to show you all the stuff I changed just with how the power supplies are wired. And it really helps me understand some of the problems that we've seen and some of the other things that we've looked at. Um, okay, so I'm taking my 2950, which is a bench radio. It's not something I use on the air. And I had to go find it <laughs> with the ICOM 7300. So I'm using the ICOM 7300 with no antenna attached to it as my receiver for audio. Then over here, we've got our spectrum analyzer. Over here, we've got um, our actual oscilloscope. And shit. I'm just sitting there looking at the amp draw off the power supplies. Really what was happening is we were running on one power supply. I'll explain to you why. So, now what's in the way? Let's move this. You guys don't want to zoom in and really look at everything. It's a thousand watt slug in peak, the thousand in average, and five watt slug in reverse. Um, 2950, just putting about 15, 20 watts into it on sideband. Hello, audio, one, two, one, two, audio, one, two, one, two, audio, one, two, one, two, hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Power supply is staying above 14.19 volts. Hello, audio, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now the radio might be off just a little bit for the receive audio, but as we can easily hear with our own ear holes, the openings, the orifices on the side of our heads. Um, there's no massive distortion going on with my audio. Right? I mean, I could sit here and I could chase this around. Just checking everything out and seeing how well this sucker works. One, two, hello, audio, one, two, one, two, one, two, hello, ah, da, 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 da. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, hello. Huh. I just seen something that caught my attention. I want to show you what I observed from across the room as I was running this thing. <laughs> I just seen it through the grill guard and I thought, man, is that a weird play on light? Check this out. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello, audio, one, two, one, two, hello, 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 hello. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello, 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 hello. Let me help you see it better. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. I was like, what is that? And then it slowly dims. Both supplies are doing that. Whoa. That's a trip. Hmm. So I wonder if I replace those disc caps. What's causing that? Is it RF getting on the friggin' weeds going into the supply? Think about this one for a minute. Hello, one, 
two, one, two, one, two. Hello, 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 hello. And you're gonna take your eyes and you're gonna look here, and then you're gonna look right here. But most power supplies, disc capacitor having an issue. The other thing we're having is the coupling on the power supply is tripling. You can hear it tripping. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Here it comes. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, one, two, one, two. You gotta be careful. Because there's no cooling going on on the supplies. Sorry, I bumped the camera. I'm in the dark, I bumped the camera. No cooling going on the supplies. So none of the little magical schmoo bits in there are getting any, any air circulation to them. And that's lame, I thought I'd cracked it. There are guys that are having all kinds of weird failures with these out there left and right. Um, one of the things that I noticed um, while playing with this is that they had all of the DC, they had this power supply, the positive and the negative, paralleled to this power supply and then in turn one lead going off to the capacitor bank. What I did is I took and I moved that just for as an experiment. I'll show you what I mean. And I took and I moved that so the two lead links that come off of each one of the supplies are roughly the same. These leads are soft, too. Um, summed them together at this capacitor bank because the positive and negative current comes to this filtration bank, which if these are really good switchers, you don't even need to have this capacitor bank. Summed them here to these two leads. And then the leads come around, they attach here, and then they go down to the amplifier um, or source and load. Well... Experimentation in this thing is not what I want to do. So let's do some quick math here. Let's see what do we got going on in here for capacitance. 7200, so 14. Four, that's pretty close to 16, Mike. That'll keep us from having any AC ripple going on. I, I can't leave these in here and trust them in clear conscience. Not in clear conscience. I can't do this in clear conscience. I just can't. I live, I breathe, I die um, by hobbit tears and unicorn farts and if I say something's right it's got to be right before it leaves here. So I have two options. I can stick a 500 and some dollar meanwhile supply in this space or we can go back old school. And me personally, I want to go old school. I do. I just want to go old school. I should have done this hours ago. But there was a lot of neat learning that took place in here. Um, the other thing is that they had the AC leads paralleled to this unit and then to this unit. But then the DC current's going from this unit to the actual load source, which is bad. Um, this power supply is getting a brunt of the punishment. Meanwhile, this one's taking up the load second. And what you want to do is you want to split share... 110 volt, let's say hot lead, comes into this unit, then you piggyback it to this unit, and then your ground, your return lead, you're going to bring to this unit, and then piggyback it to this unit. That way they get, they can see the same circuit at the same distance at the same load potential. That way you can have sharing, equal sharing of the current. And then the same thing with the DC side, because they had the ground lead attached here and the ground lead, or the positive lead attached here to this supply, 100% of the voltage and amp load is hitting this particular unit. Meanwhile, this one doesn't do anything until this is 100% tapped out. So if you want to have proper current sharing between the two units, the feed points going in and coming out, the AC side going in and the DC side coming out, have to be exactly the same length and they have to be fed from the same point. Otherwise, you're going to have one unit that's going to take the brunt of the punishment and I guarantee you two, three, four, five months from now, um, continuous operation on sideband where this thing is stroking as hard as it possibly can because we're pulling 90 
seven to 104 amps out of each one of these 50 amp modules, um, this one would probably have quit if we wouldn't have caught that. But it's all for naught now. These units are coming the F out. That's all I gotta say about that. And we're gonna go to old school tech. So, there was some tweaking that took place on this side of the cabinet. I don't know what that was all about. Um, like we've discussed, this is way too thin to support the weight of the transformer. So, what we've done is we've gone and we've cut ourselves out a fairly decent, thick sized aluminum plate that we can now mount the transformer to. Let's pan out a little bit. But we can now mount the transformer to. We'll use the cabinet of the amplifier as our heat sink. And we're going to use these two caps as our filtration circuit. We'll sum this together for ground and we'll sum these two leads together for the hot. We'll come right off the all in one submerged brick. And um, hopefully, fingers crossed, tongue in cheek, this will go pretty quick. We just tripled the weight of this thing. But I, me personally, I know that I increased its reliability by tenfold. Just in my heart of hearts. No offense, Nate. Okay, so. New transformer, new bridge rectifier, um, the capacitors. Added a couple more things down here to help filter things out. Let's go over here and we'll take a quick look for at the watt meters. Now we've got a nice solid power supply that we totally believe in, 100%. So we got a thousand watt slug here, right here. Thousand on average, five watt slug in reverse. Remember we were doing about nine and some change. Remember barely squeeching up there to about nine and some change, right? Check this out. Same amount of drive. I better show that to you too, or otherwise you're gonna somebody's gonna call foul. No BBI. Hello. Hello. Oh yeah. I don't even have the power supplies on down here. Hold on. Ah. Oh, here now we're putting a whole tw 20 watts worth of whopping drive into the thing. Oh, oh, thousand watts, no problemo. Now let's go over to side VN. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello, audio, one, two, hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, hello, audio. Continuator on on this thing. Hello, audio one two one two one two one two. Hello, come in one two. Hello, got down. Okay, go back over to AM. Hello one two. Hello audio 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 audio. One two. Hello, got down. Hello. So. It does more power my way with this power supplies in it with this power supply in it let's go over here and take a quick look for it this I had a friend of mine ask me today as we set up all the screen capture technology it was why hello one two one two one two hello one two one two hello one two he asked me why we don't use any of this fancy tech because I got some really cool screen capture technology that works with this computer up here it allows me to capture whatever's on this screen or this screen up here and then allows me to mix it in with the freaking video time is the answer to the question time okay so the customer wanted me to remove the hopper label off the front and put my label on it and I said I can't do that I'm not the one that actually built the amplifier we have radically changed it. Um, 
over what it was when it was originally constructed. That is one thing, and that's one thing alone, and we're going to leave it right alone just like that. Now, there's two plugs that hold this, the fans, that plug the fans in. You're going to very carefully disconnect those when you get this on your end. When it shows up, it's going to be mounted to a board. I'm going to take, and there's two holes that are in this aluminum sheet that are over here, and I'm going to bolt this amp to the board. And that is the only thing we have found that kept this, that, that can keep this thing from getting completely beat up. Amp's a little bit bigger, or the board's going to be a little bit bigger than the amp, and we do that for a reason. The transformer is very heavy. It might might bend the amp or the transformer up, but I highly doubt it. With it being bolted to the plywood, it should be able to keep all the corners intact. We've just had a lot of problems with the transformers bending the very thin aluminum that our, our enclosures are made of. It's okay. I think we're going to be just fine. But two 120 millimeter fans, there's really not a scratch, dent, or ding on this thing, but we have radically changed the guts on the inside of this amplifier. But I think it was worth it. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello. Please note the fans aren't slowing down that much. And remember, we are in a non-regulated supply. So that means to you on the other end, you want to make sure you got this hooked up to a very substantial 110 volt outlet. Okay? Right now I've got it hooked up to a committed 15 amp outlet. There's no other shit attached to it. So we don't want to have our radio power supply, four computers, six TVs, 14 lights, partridge in a pear tree, all plugged into the same outlet or plugged into the same circuit for the room. Keep that in mind. And this thing will last you forever. Especially on sideband, because remember, it's going to pull more out of the wall on sideband. Hello, one, two, hello, audio, one, two, one, two, radio. Turn the dead key up a little bit. Hello, hello. Remember, we don't want to dead key anything past 200, ever. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, I have faith in this. This will last for years and years and years to come. On that note, gentlemen, my name is BBI. Yet one more thing that came in here completely broken and not functional to its best potential, and it's leaving here now, ready to go into the universe, and you guys are going to be listening to it on the air. A gift from me, the radio world. Okay. Um, got any questions or comments or anything I can do to help you out, don't hesitate to call that number right there on the wall. This was going to be up for sale, but I had a nice gentleman call me yesterday and talk to me for a little while. And, buddy Clay, this is coming out to you. Me to you, brother. Hope you enjoy it, and I hope you get a lot of good use out of it. I have very, very good feelings that this thing will last you for decades now. Gentlemen, i got to go. Bump, bump. From the biggest duck in Idaho, I'll see you. Bye. Before I let you guys go, um, I want to talk to you guys about something. I want to make it real clear that this is not Nate's fault. The problem that we had with the power supply is basically it's design and construction. There is a um, <clears throat> phenomenon that's taken place with imports from China. Okay. Um, we were talking about this the other day with, we were talking about wire and we're all used to a certain standard here in the United States. I want to make, make this is important that I talk about this. We are used to having American standards and American quality control when it comes to things, right? So we, as the American species of human beings, have become very, very accustomed to if the data sheet or the tag says, you know, 110 volts in is going to produce 50 volts or 50 amps at 12 volts out. We assume that means actually true 50 amps. Um, the Chinese don't have the same check and balance system that we have, like you know the underwriting laboratories that actually certify the fact that what we are purchasing produces what it says. They have the the China excrement um, as Chinese export qualification is how their standard system is set up. So, oh man, I gotta take this got me thinking I was on the phone with triple two there and we we're talking about some stuff and uh, 
Paul and I were chatting back and forth, and my brain was going about other things, and it dawned on me if we're in the land of 50 volt, or no, I keep doing that. If we're in the land of 50 amp LED light drive modules, um, I needed to replace one of my 30 amp modules that I've got running a bunch of LED lights here in the shop. Uh, where I was going with that original train of thought before the phone rang was is that we have become accustomed to having things on the label, like here. You know, it says AC input, 100 volts or 240 volts. DC output, 12 volts, 30 amps. This thing's good for about maybe 20 amps con continuous duty, 30 at a surge if we're lucky, okay? But this little certification here, the CE, okay? The joke um, that was coined by AV is China excrement. Um, this, this tag doesn't count for a lot anymore. And we, as an American people, have come accustomed to understanding that for the most part. So we have 120 amps worth of load in this situation, okay? And in theory, the power supply should have been able to handle it. In practical application, over time, the components inside the power supply, because they're literally built from the cheapest shit on earth, fail, okay? Um, uh, Hopper is a great guy. And the reason I'm shooting this add-on segment to it is because I don't want anybody to be able to go run to Hopper and say, man, can you believe that BBI was totally hacking on you? I, I have made myself I'm a very solid reputation of never tearing somebody down or belittling another company to make myself look better. It's not the way I roll. Nate is my friend. He has been a student at times. He has been a peer at times. He has been... <clears throat> an ally at times. He's been a source of information at times. He's now over working with Tony at ICA Manufacturing, Fat Boy, learning a bunch, working great, does a lot of good work for them guys, and they needed the help. Um, listen, this has got nothing to do with him. This is us as an American species. Um, because it's cheaper, we're willing to, instead of having a quality component and pay a little bit more for it, we go and buy the cheapest thing money can buy. Where I was alluding to before the phone rang was that we're having this conversation about wire. Let me show you this. I bought a bunch of wire. It's supposedly Teflon. These look like they're the same thing, right? For the most part. Okay, this is supposed to be 14 gauge Teflon. Well, guess what? This is PTFE wire, and this is also PTFE wire. This is more like 14 gauge in size, but it's internal. Wire dimension is 14 gauge. These have the exact same size wire in them. This is uh, copper nickel with a silver plate on it. This is silver plated steel. This wire here, it is magnetic. Nowhere in the description when you buy it off the internet does it say steel. It is about 15 cents cheaper per foot. That's why I was like, wow, somebody's listing this for sale. I bought a couple hundred feet of it. And we go to use it. This does all kinds of weird things when you put it inside of a transformer and try to pass RF through it because it's steel. It's magnetic. The moral of the story is cheaper doesn't always mean better. Okay? I don't know how many failures they've had. And he... And when I say this, when they say they, there for a minute, everybody was building with these 50 amp switchers. I would say they're probably a 30 or 40 amp rated device on a good day and it's cold outside. They might be able to do about 30, 40 amps continuous. Remember, this is a 30 amp supply. When we go and we read this, we think 30 amps, right? 20. With reliability to it. Okay. I came across those 50 amp switchers probably six, seven years ago myself. Um, I had one gentleman that was all about me using these modules and I put the modules in the unit and they're a little bit more spendy than the 30 amp ones, but the 30 amp ones seem to hold up with the, the way we use them. Heavy surge load um, operation. Um, I put the units in the amp, ran it, didn't have any problems with it, sent it to him within about a week or two he ended up having uh, module failures on several of the modules that came back, replaced them, then have more failures while I was here. 
I finally ended up going back to doing an iron core supply because it was reliable and I had faith in it. Now, what I was holding out hope for is that maybe that the Chinesium schmoo bags had decided that they were going to do a higher quality component. And maybe the standard had changed. But unfortunately, we learned today that the, the 50 amp modules that are being produced now are the exact same piles of garbage that were being produced, you know, seven, eight years ago. It, it, it's not reliable. Now, as soon as I put my sticker on there, I've got to know that when I send that thing from here, it's going to run for this guy who's going to spend an ass amount of money to buy it. But he's going to be able to get his use out of it and be happy with it and feel comfortable and secure. And no, every time he flips that switch on, the thing's going to run. So I want to be really clear that me personally, knowing what I know, and now that you all know it too, that this has nothing to do with the original manufacturer. It's just poor, shitty quality control, and it was a component failure. And I just wanted to line that out in the sand so there was no confusion. Because believe me when I tell you, the way some of you guys schoolyard hen peck at each other and the shit storm gets started i don't feel like dealing with the blowback and my personal friendship that i have going on with the guy that built the box so there you go gentlemen i gotta get remember we're all in this hobby together let's have fun as we're doing it i appreciate every single one of you guys and i'll take you later on the next one bump bump